Hey everybody, this is JD Gaming back today with an opening of the brand new Structure Deck Yugi Moto. Now, of course, we already had the Starter Deck a long time ago. We had the Evolution Starter Deck, and then after that, they made the Reloaded stru uh, Starter. But this is the first time they've actually gone and made a structure which is what they've been doing since the beginning in OCG, I believe. I wasn't even going to pick this up originally, but I happened to be at a local store because I needed to pick some stuff up with my friend for an event, and it just so happened that they had this, but they didn't have the Kaiba one in stock, so unfortunately, uh, we're going to open the Yugi one for now. I'll try to get the Kaiba one for next week. Can't guarantee I'll be able to get it because, again, this weekend's kind of busy, but we'll see what we can do with it. Uh, for those who haven't seen this in stores yet, reads in the back, In his final duel, Yugi faced off against the Pharaoh. His only chance to defeat the Egyptian god cards was with this brand new Magnet Warrior deck. This structure deck collects all of Yugi's original Magnet Warriors and adds the brand new Electro Magnet Warrior monsters, plus new spell and trap cards, and a new Mega Monster to assemble from your Magnet Marvels. So, this is of course the list, but rather than looking at that, we're just going to go ahead and pop this thing right open, and we'll see the cards firsthand. So, very excited to be opening a starter, or structure, I guess. It's been a while since we've done something like this on this channel. Mainly because I wasn't interested in like playing the Monarch deck or anything, that's why I didn't open them. But, you know, when it comes to stuff like this, it's collector stuff, so this is the thing that beeps every time you try to go out of the store and they forget to do it. We have a beginner's guide, which looks pretty cool. Let's flip through that real fast. So this is similar to what they did, I think. The 5Ds era, they did this in like the little tins or something. This is pretty much a uh, I guess it's a mini version of the rule book. It looks like they've updated some things. They have like an FAQ. So in many ways it's a rule book. Interestingly, they don't have an actual rule book in here. They just have the quick guide. And then let's take a quick look at the mat. So I can already see the big Imperion guy. Yeah, so there he is. Over here is like this giant centaur guy is Valkyrian plus Berserian together. And then we have uh, Dark Magician and Yugi, of course. So this is a pretty cool mat. It's interesting that they actually label all the zones with text. Um, mainly because I guess I'm not used to these starter mats anymore. Yeah, thank you, Mac. Even the first one had that. But we're going to go ahead and now open up the deck itself. I guess the last time we did something similar to this was when we did legendary decks, because it's kind of like having three starters. Because I did open package like this. Packaging. Whoops, bumped the stand I'm using. Anyway, here we have Imperion Magnum, the superconductive battle bot, which looks really, really cool. It is a level, what is that, 10 rock fusion that needs Valkyrian as well as Berserian. It looks like I have a little scratch there from the factory, kind of weird. Anyway, must be fusion summoned with the above fusion materials and cannot be special summoned by other ways. Once per turn during either player's turn, when your opponent activates a spell, trap, or monster effect, you can negate the activation. If you do, destroy it totally for free. If this face of card's owner's control leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect, you could special summon one each of Valkyrian and Berserian uh, from your hand and or deck ignoring summoning conditions. 4,000 attack and defense, so really, really cool monster. This is supposed to, of course, be the counterpart to Kaiba's new, like, A to Z dragon crazy thingy. We have Versirian, the Electro Magna Warrior, which is similar to Valkyrian, but he's a little weaker in terms of a tech stat. I think this one's a little oddly printed. I don't know if you could tell from the camera the way it is, but it's kind of blurry when I'm looking at this card in person. Anyway, um, as you would expect, you have to use Alpha, Beta, and Gamma, but these are the Electro Magna Warriors that you use. And then... Um, you can manage a level 4 or lower Magnet Warrior monster from your graveyard. The target, a card your opponent controls, destroy it if this card is destroyed by battle. Or if this card's owner's possession is destroyed by an opponent's card effect, you can target one each of your banished Electro Magnet Warriors and special summon them. And then we have Alpha, Beta, and Gamma, all new super rares. I do like the fact that they give multiple Ultras and multiple Supers per deck now, because I feel like there are times that they make decks like this, make new cards, and they really should all be foil. I'm not going to go through all these effects because they are, um, they're very similar to each other. They have one unique thing, I guess, but I'll, I'll go through them at the end. We have Kuriborn, which is, of course, a reborn version of Karibo. Uh, we have Valkyrian, the original Magnet Warriors, the Dark Magician with this artwork, which looks really, really cool. But I kind of wish we got this as a foil because I don't think we got this in 
TCG as the holofoil. This was like a jump promo in OCG, so that would have been really cool, but at least we have the artwork now. Dark Magician Girl, Buster Blader, Jax, Queens, and King's Knight. We have Burfamet, Gazelle, which is always treated as a Phantom Beast card. They errated that in the text. Obnoxious Celtic Guard, Giant Soldier of Stone, Karibo, the original, Skilled Dark Magician, Skilled White Magician, Twin-Headed Behemoth, Magnetic Field, which is a new field spell. So I'll bring all the new cards up. I'll read them at the end just because I um, don't want to spend too much time for people who want to see the whole thing. Dark Magic Inheritance, we'll read that. That's a really cool new card. Dark Magic Curtain and Attack, Mystic Box, Swords of Revealing Light, Spell Shattering Arrow, Polymerization, always a good reprint, Defusion. Swords of Concealing Light is actually a reprint I'm very glad to see. Attack the Moon, finally reprinted. Magnet Conversion, Magician Circle, Mirror Force, Magic Cylinder, Soul Rope, Rock Bombardment, which I guess makes sense. The alternate art version of Arcana Knight Joker, which looks really, really cool. Again, I wish this were foil, but you know what it is, what it is. Another common Dark Paladin. I'm, it's just so weird seeing common Dark Paladins nowadays, but yeah, I remember when they were so expensive. Chimera and Buster Blader, the Dragon Destroyer Swordsman. I didn't even know this thing was in here, but I guess it makes sense considering we do have a Buster Blader in here. And then they made the Twin-Headed Behemoth be that one dragon that you can use. I'd imagine Super Poly might have been in here if it weren't a forbidden card, just because you could use it with like the use it against the Kaiba deck. Anyway, we've gone over Berserian and the Imperial Magnum dude. Let's look at the cards that are new now. So Alpha, the Electromagnet Warrior. I'm gonna get this to focus on the text a bit more. There we go. If this card is normal or special summoned, you can add a level 8 Magna Warrior monster from your deck to your hand. You can only use this effective Alpha the Electromagnet once per turn. During your opponent's turn, you can tribute this card to special summon a level 4 Magnet Warrior monster from your deck as a quick effect. 1700 attack, 1100 defense, which actually is very similar to Alpha originally. I think it was like 1700 defense, 1400 attack was the original Alpha. Yeah, so that's, that's this counterpart here. So similar... For some reason, my card came damaged, which is kind of disappointing considering this is new, but oh well, it is what it is. Beta, the Electromagnet Warrior, is um, level 4. Uh, this guy, other guy was level 4 as well. Or no, 3. They're level 3. They're all level 3. Okay, so um, this guy's 15-15, which is different from the 17-16 that we used to have. And it says, if this is normal or special, you can add a level 4 or lower magnet warrior monster from your deck to your hand, except beta the electromagnet. You can only use this effect once per turn. During your opponent's turn, you can tribute this card to special summon a level 4 magnet warrior monster from your deck. This is a quick effect. So first one we have summons from your deck. This one also summons from your deck. So they have the electromagnetic ability to draw each other in only during the opponent's turn in a certain situation, which I guess is kind of like what an electromagnetic magnet does, only under certain conditions. Um... Will it actually act as a magnet? And then we have, of course, the new gamma. These stats are all over the place here. Instead of 15, 18, we have 800 and then 2,000. So I thought they would have been, you know, similar variants, but not exactly sure. This does look like a version of gamma that has, uh, like, he has similar hands and arms. Just everything else about him is different. So this is where I thought the similarities were different. I really thought, like, beta looked just like beta wearing stuff. But... Gamma. So it says if this is normal or special summon, you can special summon a level four or lower magnet from the grave or from the hand, except Gamma, the magnet warrior. Um, you can only use this effect of the electromagnet once per turn. During your opponent's turn, you can tribute this card to special summon a, again a magnet warrior from your deck as a quick effect. So these are a lot easier to actually bring out to summon your Berserian because they summon each other out. And uh, the whole point of that, of course, is to make it so that you're actually able to bring out Berserian with some ease, and then you can go for this guy once you get out both big behemoths. Curryborn is a fiend. It says at the end of your battle phase, you can discard this card, then target a monster in your graveyard that was destroyed by battle and sent there this turn. Special summon it. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target any number of Karibo monsters in your graveyard and special summon them. So, interesting revival trick. Magnet Field, or Magnetic Field, is a field spell that says if you control a level 4 or lower Earth Rock monster, you can target a level 4 or lower Magnet Warrior in your grave and special it. You can only use this effective Magnet Field once per turn. Once per turn at the end of the damage step, when an Earth Rock monster you control battled an opponent's monster, but your opponent's monster survived, you can return that guy to the hand. So bouncing things back, reviving things, overall a decent field spell for them. Dark Magic Inheritance is a pretty cool card. You actually get to see DMG 
her hats off, though, for some reason. Um, guess it's part of this ritual for the inheritance. Banish two spells from your graveyard to add a spell or trap from your deck to your hand that specifically lists Dark Magician or Dark Magician Girl in its text, except Dark Magic Inheritance. You can only activate one of these per turn, but it is a quick play spell, which is pretty cool for the new support. And then Magnet Conversions, our last new card. Um, you can actually see both forms of beta. It looks like they're interchanging parts. Target up to three level four or lower Magnet Warrior monsters in your graveyard and add them to your hand. During either player's turn, except the turn this is sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard. Then target one of your banished level four or lower Magnet Warriors and special summon it. So, interesting. Uh, gets you the ability to add all your Magnets back if you were like power mill through them or something. But, I don't know. It's an interesting card. Don't know if that's really what Magnet Warrior is needed or anything. But, I don't know, I haven't played these cards yet, so I can't really say. But, it is really cool to see both a nice mix of really new cards, we're seeing a bunch of old classics. Some of these were getting reprinted more than others, but I am really glad we got this artwork of Dark Magician. And, yeah, there's some good, good timing on this, really. It just happens to be uh, that they were going for the movie in Japan at least, here we're waiting until I think it's like January or February, something like that. Early next year is when the movie's supposed to hit the States. But until then, we just have a bunch of nostalgia stuff so that we can enjoy for fun. So in the comments below, let me know what your favorite new card in the set is. Could be, you know, because it's a new card, because of its effect, because of its art, because they're giving support for, you know, some old strategies. Whatever the case, share your thoughts down below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. This is JD Gaming, and I'll see you guys next week with the Kaiba deck, once I can get a hold of that. See ya.